Yo, what up, friends? So, I wanted to come talk to you guys about what I've been doing since the Harbinger strategy. A lot of people have said they've made a lot of money with the Harbinger strategy. They've been extremely successful. The comments on the video have been absolutely fantastic, and I appreciate all the feedback. You guys have told me things that you like, things that you don't like, things you want to see, and I keep encouraging you guys to use the comment section down below because it keeps giving me good information about what you guys want to see and what you don't want to see and what, you know, what kind of questions or observations that you had. And to be honest, I would really like interacting with you guys. So today I wanted to talk to you about money-making strategies and what I've been doing and haven't been doing. Now, spoiler, if you read the title, you know where we're going to go with this. But since the Harbinger strategy... I've made a lot of money, I've spent a lot of money, and I'm prepping my next major adventure. Now you'll notice in this video a couple of things. My inventory is open, and you see a really cool shield that some of you guys might be familiar with. And you guys will notice a Forbidden Flame, a Forbidden Flash, a Heat Shiver, a Timeless Jewel, and a bunch of other really cool things. Now I'm not going to give any spoilers to what skill I'm going to be playing, or what variation of what I'm going to be doing, or what I'm aiming towards, because that would ruin the surprise for the future. But I will say that I've got something really cool planned. I traded in the Headhunter for the shield. And, you know, if you know, you know. If not, there'll be a video or you'll catch it on stream. But for now, today I want to talk to you about how I'm making all the money, what I'm doing, and what my character is doing, and how to walk you guys through the success that I've been having. Now, we've talked about Blight a lot. I've expressed the different ways to do Blight, different ways to handle Blight. I've talked about the Ring Anoints, this one being Violet Indigo. And this ring anoint being opal and silver, opalescent and silver. There have been a lot of threads about Blight being nerfed secretly. This strategy doesn't work. Blight's too hard. And I leave it to you to try it out and make a judgment call. Now, for the past week on Twitch, I've been doing nothing but Blight. I got yelled at by a good buddy of mine, Silver6, who was like, Hey, I know your Harbinger strategy is really good, but me and Kenny have both made a mage blood." From scratch, doing Blight Ravage. Blight Ravage is really good. It's really solid. And, you know, we would love to see you do it and try it out. We think we stumbled on something that's great, and you should really give it a go. And I was like, eh, I don't know. And Silver looked at me. He's like, you're being a dumbass. Just come down. I was like, cool. I call you a dummy all the time, and you do dumb stuff, and you're calling me a dummy. So either uh, one of us is going to prove the other one wrong. So let's get to it. So I bought... Seven Divines worth of Blighted Maps, which was an entire tab worth of Blighted Maps, and I have not stopped since. I literally can't bring myself to stop. The money is too good. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I have a couple of you guys who have been, like, nonstop supplying me with supplies to Blight. I buy supplies, like, every five hours because I don't have enough supplies. And with having to constantly buy supplies to Blight, I am still making money hand over fist. Like I said... I bought this shield. The shield was uh, 220 divines. I crafted my scepter for my weapon, which was like 20, 25 divines. I bought a 60 divine flesh and flame combo. I've spent a lot of divines doing this strategy, and it produces a lot of divines. And I'm going to walk you through how I do it, what I do, show you a map, and the results that come out of a map. Now, I'm going to state before we run this map, RNG is RNG. Some maps are really profitable, and some maps are like, eh, this kind of sucks. That's with any strategy. So if you do two maps or three maps and you're like, hey, bro, this sucks. I'm going to tell you your sample size is really small. I've done about 150 of them. Go run more of them. Now, the big difference between a regular Blighted map and a Blight Ravage map, you'll notice that this map has about 66 quantity. It is map tier 14. It has a small pack size, nothing too major. When we look at this, the monster item or the monster level is automatically 85. It doesn't matter which tier of Blight Ravage map I do, 13, 14, 15, 16. They're all monster level 85. They're all pretty strong. So we could put nine annoyance on our Blight Ravage map instead of the normal three. Usually I'd tell people to do triple amber, triple teal, or to experiment. Uh, a good buddy of mine, Scott, is having a really good time with triple crimson on his regular Blighted maps. He's actually making money hand over fist and... We have a good system where I buy all his high-tier oils and sell him all my crimsons. But for Blight Ravage, what the strategy I was told and what I'm going to be sharing with you today is we're going to do the following. We're going to put two silver oils. I know. If this sounds expensive already, trust me, it's fine. We're going to be adding 160% quantity to our map. We're going to add two opalescents, so we have 36 of our chests. They're lucky. We're going to add two black, so that 14% chance for a chest to have an additional reward. And then since that's two, four, six, we can add three more oils. 
If you're newer to Blight Ravaged, I highly suggest you do the reduced cost of building as it helps and you can make a ton of towers, you have more control over the lanes and you can like prep things a little bit better. But for this test and with the way I'm doing it, I do triple teal as I enjoy the monsters to spawn a whole lot faster. If you'd like more profit, you can do triple crimson and crimson will give you more blight chest or lucky. If you're feeling really spicy, you can do gold. If you want to save a little bit of money, you can do azer. But for me, I'm a big fan of maps per hour, so I'm going to throw on triple teal. Now, I'm going to chisel this. You'll see without even alking it, we're at 180 quant. I'm going to throw an alk orb on it. We're at 238. I usually go for 250 or better. I'm going to val orb it, and we're going to get going. Now, I have noticed with Blight Ravage maps, and I can't speak for everybody, and this is a really good opportunity in the comments to let me know down below. But when I do a Fizz Reflect map, I have noticed there has been a lot of lag in Blight Ravage. I've reported this to GGG. I'm hoping that it's not just a local problem, but if you guys are having a problem with Blight Ravage and you're noticing lag in Fizz Reflect maps, please let me know, or let me know what's going on so that I can continue to update them on my findings. Now, just like any Blight Ravage map, we're gonna do the exact same strategy that we'll always do. We're gonna make our towers and we're just gonna go in. The biggest difference between what I'm doing right now and what you guys would be doing if you were running triple amber oil is these mobs are going to spawn fast and they're going to be aggressive and they're just going to come at us. Now with my current gear, I have a bow that is 1,333 DPS. My character itself does a lot of DPS, so I'm able to do the triple teal. I do not recommend doing triple teal if your character cannot deal the damage. I highly recommend trying other things and slowing it down. Now you'll notice that I still build the Empowering Tower, that goes to three, the Chilling Tower goes to three, the Seismic goes to three, and the Flame Meteor Tower still goes to four. Now, during the course of this test, I'm gonna show you guys some findings and some things that I found out that have helped me with my success of Blight Ravage maps. A lot of people are like, bro, don't tell people. I'm a big fan of sharing knowledge. So you're gonna notice during this run, that I am going to build another type of tower and it's gonna help me to contain what's going on with the bosses and the maps and stuff. So you see right here, this boss is stuck. We have no problems. The flame tower is gonna do its job and we don't really have to worry about it. So that's all in good fun and dandy. Now, if I really wanna make this boss a little bit spicy and I wanna have a little extra security, I'm gonna build another ice tower, which is what we would normally do should really get this under control before I go back over there and deal with that boss. So let's get this a little under control. And you'll see that I'm building these tier four ice towers and they're creating cages. And these cages are allowing me to ricochet off the walls to get a little bit extra DPS in. They're also keeping the mobs from moving and they're just kind of helping me control things. Now this is a tech that I found out accidentally on stream. A couple of you guys in the Twitch channel have told me about it. It has been extremely helpful. And it just gives me a little bit extra cushion or time to build extra towers and keep things in check to just make sure that I'm <coughs> not getting overrun by the bosses, not getting overrun by the mobs, and just able to like run around and build some extra towers. Now you'll see the bosses down here under control. We're building the flame towers to deal with those. All the mobs up here are under control. And we're building some extra towers up here. <clears throat> excuse me and pretty much all in all everything with this map is more than likely under control so we're going to build our flame tower here we're going to build an extra ice tower over here just to kind of like help keep it under control come back down here and you know give it a little give it a little look see make sure nothing's going haywire and you see just as basic as ever you can see I don't really do damage to the bosses, that my, my boss DPS is not very high, and I'm still relying on the towers. Now, this guy says resilient to fire, and he'll eventually die. Yes, I know they seem to be a little bit more resilient than they were in the past, but I don't think that's a, a shadow nerf like a lot of people are saying. I just think that's just, yeah, it's, it's a change. I'm trying to like downplay it. It's, it seems to be a change. They seem to be a little bit more resilient. But, I mean, they die. They die. It's an uber map. You pretty much get to AFK it. Like I said, I've been doing this all week. You can see that I'm not dealing the damage. I'm clearly not killing the boss. The only reason that boss died there is I have calling strike before anybody calls me out. So I'm able to call the boss, which is really nice. That guy's been getting shot at with that flame tower for a hot minute. And 
I'm able to clean up the rares and the smaller mobs pretty easily. Now you'll notice very quickly as we've completed this map that the reward tiles are much, much greater than a normal blighted map. And this loot filter will be available in the description so you guys can grab that there. <coughs> but you'll notice very quickly when I show you guys the loot, and I know my face is gonna be weighing some of the loot and I apologize in advance, but you'll see very quickly we find a lot. There's an exalted orb. We find a lot, and I mean a ton, a ton of loot. Now, a lot of this is hidden, so you're not going to see a lot of stuff. I've hidden, you know, like there's a Viridian Jewel. There's a synthesized belt. We'll come over here. I've hidden a lot of the armor bases. So I personally don't care. We find fractured boots, and it's really up to you to decipher on how you want your loot filter to look like and what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Now, I've gotten this loot filter from my Discord. Those guys put it together. Big shout out to Kenny for putting it together and my buddy Silver for telling me what changes to make to get it up and running. And overall, it has been very, very, very successful for me. Now, you'll see so far we have a bunch of essences. We've gotten an exalted orb. We've gotten some random chaos. And so far, I feel like it's been pretty good. <clears throat> if we look at... If we look at the essences... They're about one C a piece. So we've gotten two, three, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20. This is a silver oil right here. This is three C. These are 10 C total. So that's 13. So that almost makes up the other silver oil. There is one opalescent that we've spent. So it's really, really, really easy to make up the currency that you put into these maps. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, what about the profit? How does the profit look? And I'm gonna be the first person to tell you, I, I haven't really been calculating profit for hours. I find these strategies to be very fun, but there's a lot of hidden profit in Blight Ravage that I don't think a lot of you guys have realized thanks to the Crucible mechanic itself. Now, what I mean by that is you'll notice very quickly on my loot filter, I have highlighted spine bows, steel kite shields, champion kite shields. These spine bows are selling in bulk at 8C a piece. Those kite shields or steel kite shields are selling in bulk at 5C a piece. <coughs> Sambar scepters are selling in bulk at three C a piece and blight ravage gives you a ton of them. And when I mean a ton of them, I mean an absolute metric ton. So many that you'll notice that I have stash tabs for the kite shields, the sambar scepters and all of, I have spine bows here, all 86. I have D and D on now, or I turned D and D on and I started recording as soon as I logged on. So like, we, don't, we won't see a lot of sales, but these sell all the time. And if we look at this, this is 816, so it's 16C, 510, that's 26, and that covers the silver oil. <coughs> so just in that alone, we're making some money back. Now I've done maps where I've gotten three divines in a clip. I've done maps where I've gotten no divines, which you see right now. I've done maps where I've seen 30, 40, 50 chaos. I've done maps where I've gotten a hundred stack decks. The loot is unique and the loot is random. <coughs> Excuse me. I highly encourage you to give a couple of these a try. I would say that if you have one or two bad ones, to just shrug it off to bad loot. They happen, you get bad loot in regular maps as well. And something to remember and something to keep in mind. Map layout might make things rough for you. Oh, look, another result on our... You may lose a map to map layout. If you are playing a Vengeant Cascade dot skill, those ice glacial towers will be your best friends as they trap things in and it makes it easier to bounce off mobs and walls. But overall, this is what I've been doing. Now, tomorrow or today or the next time you tune into the stream, I'll more than likely be doing Blight Ravage. I will be leveling my next character. 
which is the secret project that I showed you earlier. So if you don't catch Blight Ravage right away, hang out as as soon as that character can equip some of the gear, we'll be doing a ton of Blight Ravage. I'll be doing Blight Ravage tonight on stream. So yeah, man, it's, it's a good time. It's a lot of fun. And I really, really, really encourage you to just give it a whirl and check it out. Now, if you looked at the currency that we've constantly gone back and put back, we haven't really put a whole lot of bad things back. We picked up a lot of cool things that are worth a lot of money. And we overall just have been blasting maps. Yes, you will need to buy silver oils. Yes, you will need to buy opalescent oils. You probably won't need to buy black oils. But even with having to buy constant silver oils and opalescent oils and restock on maps themselves, as yes, I am buying my maps, it has still been an out-of-this-world experience and the profit has been phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and i highly highly encourage you guys to give it a run and give it a test now that's really it there's nothing more to it slap on your ring annoyance grab a map alk chisel corrupt it put the annoyance on or put the annoyance on it first and just give it a whirl if it works and you're having a great time great if it fails and you're struggling don't just yell at me that it didn't work give us a rundown of what happened give us a little bit of a description of why it didn't work what you think happened and maybe we can find a solution that'll work for you but for now i'm going to get this video out and edited into you guys i'm going to go start leveling my new character because i'm really really excited to play with the shield we'll be doing some crafting on stream and overall that's it for now guys have a wonderful afternoon evening good morning i will see you guys in the next one